What's up everybody, Rich Fredman here. Hey, on this episode of Pick Rich's Brain, we've got my great buddy, Jim McCarthy, and we're gonna be talking about all things sales, leadership, and pricing for what you do. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. Okay, so Jim also edits these things, which is great. And so if you ever see the intro to this web series, he put together the most incredible intro ever. I feel like a superhero, <laughs> composer, wow. actor, entrepreneur. He did a great job because Thank he's you. a professional voiceover artist. So Jim, everybody, I would like to officially invite you to episode six of Pick Rich's Brain, live from Nashville, Tennessee, Crash Studios. Today, my guest is my dear friend, Jim McCarthy. Jim! Thanks for having me on. Dude, thank you for coming here. I now, feel like usually, I'm here all the time. Yeah, you're here all the time, but you're, you're by- I'm always so over there. If you've tuned into the first five episodes of this podcast web series, you've heard this voice of reason off camera, and he usually fields the questions that come mm -hmm. in via the hashtag pick Rich's brain. And he, you also ask great questions like, Rich, don't forget about this. Don't forget, don't forget to be a promosexual. Right. Talk about your beater. Talk right. about your book. Talk about your sticks. Um, so thank you, thank you. But today, the focus is on Jim. Because Jim's got tons of great advice because Jim's from Connecticut, so we have that commonality. What do we call us? Connections? Connecticutians. Connecticut. Something like that. Hey, and so are we gonna, gonna give a shout out to Tipping Point Tipping Chair yes, Tavern? Yes, Tipping Chair Tavern, yeah. uh, which I actually do a lot of work for as well. If you go to that restaurant up in uh, Southington, you'll hear my voice on the PA. Yeah, it's we're so. calling it uh, what do you call it? Voice imaging? Restaurant imaging. Restaurant imaging, mm -hmm. which is a new thing. So if you are a restaurateur out there or if you are an outside of the box thinker, what's great about Jim is, is that I just did a one man show up at the Tipping Chair Tavern. Our good buddy Jeff owns it. He's really outside the box thinker. The menu's fantastic. Miss Connecticut put together a, a health food menu mm -hmm. on it. You can have the bar food, you can have the fried pickles, you can have the, their award winning wings. Um, you can see live music seven nights a week, but you can also um, eat healthy if you want, which I did. I had the, what did I have? I had chicken and some veggies. It was great. I didn't even know I was eating healthy. Of course, I washed it down with two or three glasses of wine. And like this. And it's funny because you... <laughs> Why? And look, to, cheers to you, brother. To you. I don't know how you do it all. You're a family man. Three kids. You just do. Gorgeous wife. She you is gorgeous. You guys are happily married. She better be watching this. Cheers. Yes. Mm. People are like, why is Rich drinking wine with a silly straw? Because as we all know, if you're in my inner circle, you know that in my half point in my life, I'm working on some new things. One of which it was how I'd like to do more hosting. Mm -hmm. Hosts have to have white teeth. So I got my teeth whitened. I'm doing this regularly, four times a year. That's and they wine. say, drink the coffee and the wine out of a straw. So mm -hmm. I look I look like an ass, eep, but it's, well, I had wine last night. I'm getting used to it. And every night I have wine, it's like purple tea. I mean, when in Rome, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to do that at the right. red door. Can I get a straw? No. You know, I'm not going to do that. That's just going to look weird. It's going to look yeah. weird. But I'm in the privacy of my own home, and here we go. I'm in the privacy of my own home, <laughs> tele televising to the world. So yeah. the funny thing about uh, the Tipping Chair Tavern, speaking of relationships with Crash, Commitment Relationships, Attitude, Skill, Hunger. That old thing, yeah. That old thing. The uh, relationship there was Jeff Vitti, who was in a band with my brother. So, uh, now, and your brother, who I have I met him yet? No, killer piano player. He's a killer he's piano a, player. He's a, a Billy Joel tribute band, right? Journey tribute band. Journey tribute band. Journey tribute band and Bob Seeger up in Detroit area, and he basically um, has been playing the keys for probably forty years, and he and Jeff were in a high school cover band and um, you know we kind of all went our separate ways after that and about 10 15 years down the road Jeff comes calling and says hey I hear you do voiceover I do and I did a couple of odds and ends things with him and lo and behold here we are uh, 20 25 years later yeah so it's perfect like so, so instead of having an MC introduce the band or mm -hmm. the multiple bands per night seven nights a week mm -hmm. Jim introduces the band so when I did my one-man show up at the tipping chair tavern mm -hmm. it was like ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the stage from Jim introduce me so it was a really really cool comfortable thing but I really want to give you the spotlight I know that you have a thing I mean we could talk about your history we could talk about your relationship with the drums you are a drummer mm -hmm. you still have a drum set I do your son is playing the drums he is drumming. which is really really cool mm -hmm. he plays hot for teacher he went for broke he started out 
trying to cover Hot for Teacher and Rosanna. Rosanna. So if you aren't a drummer and you're listening, those are the two of some of the most iconic and difficult drum parts in the world to handle. He kind of bypassed the boom schmack and went right for the porquero. Everyone goes yeah. for the goes for the difficult stuff and you will always come back to the boom schmack. Yeah. Um, because it's what makes people laugh and dance and cry and all that. Um, <laughs> I'm, and, I'm, I'm obsessively watching the comments, guys. Oh, yeah, there are so. comments going <clears throat> now. I'm I'm hoping that you can see that far because I sure as hell can. I can. I'm keeping an eye on it because okay. that's typically what I do. I'm always behind the comment. I'm, I'm watching what you guys uh, write all the time and making sure that we address your questions. But the, the bottom line with what we're talking about today is the fact that I've always had this thing about sales. Yes. You know, and I... It is, I, it is your, it is your, uh, your strength. I right. mean, that is like if you were going to be a motivational speaker that would be your tie in right. sales leadership and marketing and i think ideation and encouragement for people yes which you and i have had a lot of conversations over the years uh regarding where you ought to go with your personal brand mm -hmm. uh and how that should be uh fleshed out um and don't mind me just so as we're rolling here you see this thing i'm monitoring sound he's listening okay? to the ball game i'm li yeah <laughs> I'm monitoring the sound tonight, coming Preds. out of coming out of our little recorder, so it's the production guy in me. But just a brief background: radio for 20 years. That's why I'm kind of been always like an audiophile. Yeah. Uh, then I got into video. That's how Rich and I met, um, and there, it just kind of went from there. You were at Jack FM. Jack right? FM here in Nashville, Mix 92.9. I was in Las Vegas for four years doing uh, CBS radio work, a lot of voiceover and production work. Uh, won several awards doing that. Uh, you know. Uh, all through those years. And you had a side jaunt as a high-end car salesman. I did that after radio. Um, I wanted to find a way to, you know, make a little bit better money for the family and everything. And, you know, it was one of those things, I tell people this all the time, I knew how to sell, but then I really knew how to sell once I got into the car business, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I thought I knew how to sell. I could sell my video products, my voiceover products, just by getting in front of a person and just explaining it and everything. But I didn't adapt a process for sales until I started selling So what can cars. what can a, a creative person, this is also something that you focus on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you have been a guest speaker at my, you were a guest speaker at my fourth annual Drummers Weekend in mm -hmm. Nashville. We've actually had four of these folks. Um, we're actually going to be doing our fifth annual Drummers Weekend in Nashville, November three through five. Mm -hmm. And you're going to come speak and you're calling it uh, sales it's, for creatives. Sales for creatives. It's not the sexiest title, but give me time. It could be business for creatives. It could be, or yeah. you know, you know, or, it's better or, than sales for dummies because creatives are we're in we're in fashion. It's all the rage. Being you know monetizing your creativity, which is very difficult because some people don't know how to use both sides of their brain, right? Or they have no interest. Well, a lot of it comes down to um, I have a hierarchy of how people ought to see themselves in business being that entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial spirit is alive That's and well a tongue twister, isn't it? it really is, it really is. Um, is very alive and well and a lot of the things that are coming down the pike as you know i'm a big fan of vaynerchuk and you bust my balls over it all the time guys which is, which is jim funny. hearts gary vaynerchuk check it out really there's do. a book called crush it matter of fact our friend tori we're taking a detour but our friend right. tori mcdonald who's also kind of like Almost kind of like manages mm -hmm. my good buddy Sarah. Right. Cardiel mm -hmm. on the East Coast. Sarah's probably watching because, you know, she's like a little sister, but a yeah. student. I met her at the, uh, at, the, at the camp. At the camp. One of her questions was, how, how do you use social media to leverage a personal brand? You basically do it every day. You, uh, you constantly tell a story as much as you possibly can every day, much like how you're doing, um, depending on what kind of demo you want to reach. Obviously, Snapchat's a, the, a younger demo. Younger than that would be like where my kids are living and musically and stuff like that. I haven't touched that. Oh, it's, but you know, it's funny because being a musician and it being musically, right. it would make sense and you could start influencing those you know, six to 12 year olds that are doing that kind of stuff all the time and getting them, because you remember when you were eight years old, you were idolizing the guys who were in their 30s, 40s, yeah, and then Pete, the, Peter Chris right. Kiss, you know, who, who Same knows thing. how old he was in 1970. So those kids know. aren't allowed to have a Facebook account yet, probably. Uh, my kids don't have one yet, but they have Musical.ly accounts, mm -hmm. and they just do their little things on it and everything. And then they move up to the Snapchat. Snapchat's that next demo, Instagram, and then the Facebook. Facebook has got people that are you know, 35 to 55, 60, the money demos, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why Facebook's one of the most underpriced advertising platforms out there right now. Um, but to build a personal brand, you just tell your story on it and you document 
overcreate, which is a Vaynerchuk thing, and he's absolutely right. The reason why I liked Vaynerchuk. Well, you like you like Vaynerchuk, and you like Grant Cardone, and we yeah. all, you know we like Tony Robbins. I mean, there's all there's these kind of pillars, these go-to pillars of people that are have used social media to their great advantage. They're also giving back to the world. They're also doing great things. They are, but they are also using those free platforms mm -hmm. to create a personal brand. He's um, the first time I got exposed to Vaynerchuk was when I worked for one of the companies I just came out of before I started working for myself, which is a whole other topic. Um, well, let's do it today. Let's go 90 sure. minutes. <clears throat> the, um, I came out of that. I, I, and while I was with that job, I got exposed to, to Gary Vaynerchuk from a Facebook ads uh, seminar that they had here in Nashville. And one of the speakers, one of the panelists, talked about how you know, somebody had asked him, where do you get your marketing prowess from? And he said, honest, believe it or not, actually a lot of it's from Gary Vaynerchuk. And I, yeah. something told me to write his name down. Yep. And I, I, I misspelled it and probably butchered his name. But then I went, got back to the office, looked him up, and I've been a fan. As soon as I heard him start speaking, I mean, the guy just shoots from the hip like anybody else. He's completely transparent. Completely. And as, uh, as legally as much as he possibly can. Yeah, and he and he's that that's his whole approach in speaking mm -hmm. engagements as well. You know, usually when I do a speaking <clears throat> engagements, which I've been doing for a decade, you know, I, I try to keep it squeaky clean, the occasional racy joke or a, some adult, adult humor in there, but he's yeah. just F this, F that. It's completely real and raw. That's how he is. And you could just take you know? it or leave it. But I think there's something that speaks to transparency, mm -hmm. you know, because you have always been kind of like amused to me in a sense a marketing muse where I said you know these I jumped on MySpace in 2005 it died mm -hmm. as soon as Facebook opened up in 2007 I got that on that on that platform and I just instinctively knew hey I'm drumming all the time I'm traveling all the time I'm teaching all the time I'm passionate about these things let me just put up something once or twice a day and see if I can find an audience I was just very intuitive about it you were very encouraging mm -hmm. and then in the early years I had so so many doubters and haters. You did. And you told me to push through those people, which Absolutely. was fantastic advice, so thank you. Yeah, because I mean, I knew that, um, you know, in the adage of marketing and advertising and radio and things that, that I was uh, familiar with, sometimes you'd get owners and, and advertisers that would call you up and say, hey, the latest spot is getting me some complaint calls. Mm -hmm. And I would come back and say, oh, they're talking about you. And I would just let it go silent, and they'd go, Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I'm like, what's the problem? <laughs> what's the this is what's the point of advertising? Right, right? Yeah. you know, and that's uh, you know, Cardone says it. Um, if you have haters and people who talk adversely about you, it probably means you're on the right path. Yes. You know, I call it the Howard Stern effect. Uh, back if you read some of Howard Stern's things, I'm, I was a big fan back in the 80s and 90s. My brother turned me on to him. I read all his books, saw his movie. Private uh, words, yeah. Worked on a surface level with his crew out in Vegas, but. Back when he was in Washington, he had the time where he was starting to really plant his flag in the soil. And when some of the advertisers started going away, the radio station realized, but wait a minute, we're bringing on new advertisers. Um, and then when they polled, they did the ratings and they were able to ask and poll an audience as to why do people like Howard Stern? They, first of all, they listened for two and a half hours. And the reason given was because I want to see or hear what he's going to say next. Right. People who did not like Howard Stern Listen for three and a half hours. Reason given, mm -hmm. I want to hear what he's going to say next. Right. Okay. As soon as he started polarizing people, his star just shot up infinite. You know, just infinitely. But you doing what you do, um, I'm more squeaky clean. No, I mean, you're not. I don't think you're squeaky clean. I just think you're you. You know, you, yeah. you, it's the only way you can. But I mean, be you're not you. going to see me posting about. Uh, politics or religion? No, you're just not going to see it. You know, some people like to do that, and and they like to stir the pot that way. Um, if that's their thing, um, you know, it's it's a cautionary tale with with that kind of an approach. Um, so, you know, you you kind of heed the warnings and go one of two ways. Yeah. You know, you see what what happened with Kathy Griffin this past week. That's that's you know that. But then again, that's that could be a an a genius way for a publicist to play that out over the next year. Like, you never know what may come of that. Um, but, you know, what, what you and I have talked about for Sarah, I just think Sarah does talk about, um, 
you know, every day, what is it that you're doing? Do Snapchat, do Instagram, take pictures here and there, things that are of value to your audience. Yeah, That's well, how you, yeah everyone's got something super interesting. To, I mean, right. she's practicing three hours a day. She's going to school. She's teaching kids. She's a double black belt. I mean, her life, she's also, she's befriending lots of interesting people in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm super proud of her. That's a really cool story to tell right, right. away as you're developing your, she's developing her skill set. She's putting in her 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. So in this modern day, as you're getting good at something, you could be documenting it and telling the world, da da, right, right. here I am. As opposed to you and I, we had to get put in our ten, tens of thousands of hours, get good at something, go out there. And when I moved here, it was the yellow pages, it was cold calling, it was getting the, mu the, the union musicians book and calling people alphabetically. Today, you can hit 5,000 people with one bit of information, instantaneously. But the thing is that you have that perspective of prospecting. That's part of the sales process. You were prospecting, mm -hmm. whether you knew it or not. Yeah. You knew that you would have to hit the ground Playing running. Playing the numbers game. Right, it was lottery. Yeah. But I mean, and, and the more people you got in front of, the more chances you had, the better chance you had to make a sale. And you have to have faith in your product. So you can go, I'm gonna go sell this mm -hmm. thing. That yeah. product, for me, was being me. Mm -hmm. Same with you, because you're selling your products and services as a, 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 um, a voiceover artist and as someone that does interesting video work mm -hmm. that now we how we came into each other's lives was a thing called vid sigs mm -hmm. now which was short for video signatures so jim's idea behind this was to have at the end of your email where you actually put your signature your google signature to have a video that was less than a minute or less than two minutes that was a person against a white sheet mm -hmm. so you were only focusing on that person in Almost their literally. rawest form yeah telling themselves <clears throat> about what they did. And that whole idea was born out of what I did on radio. Because from my earliest days in radio as a production director, you'd be sitting in the production studio. I was also on air in Connecticut, but as on, in radio um, and production, mainly I was the guy who had all the clients that came in and recorded the commercials for the clients whenever they wanted to be in their own spots. So they would come in and they would have their script in front of them. And they would run through their script and read everything. And it was, you know, I would, after a while, I would say, okay, you know what? Now that you're warmed up and you know you got it, your tongue is limber, your cheeks are kind of warmed up, let's take the copy out of your hands yep. and let's just have a conversation. And within that 20 minutes, I would ask, uh, you know, who are you? Why do you do what you do? What do you do? Who do you do it for? You captured it. Right. And we just have a conversation about, um, what they do and it was it was completely authentic it was off the cuff it was off the top of their head from the heart uh and within that 20 25 minute session i would get about three or four radio spots Amazing. 60 seconds it's a great idea and you speak to, you use this word authentic mm -hmm. which is very funny that we're that we're bringing this up because the name of your actual film company oh, is authentic films <laughs> at one time it so was. so when you when i mean i have i have every faith in you that you're going to do more short films and do more video work in that realm but uh, ladies and germs, <laughs> about seven years ago, when I was still coming up mm -hmm. with this young artist named Jason Aldean and Kurt Allison and Dolly Kennedy and everybody that was in the Jason Aldean organization, Jim had the idea to follow me around for a week, the week in the life of a sideman musician. So we're talking to rehearsals, we're talking, we're talking to shows, we're talking on the tour bus, we're talking recording sessions everything a little bit of my home life which we kind of took out because i don't have a home life anymore yeah um but uh, but those that are watching that know me and knew me from 10 years ago that was a freshly married man they might know the story oh, well, you weren't even married yet yeah we were still dating yeah you were engaged um that just goes to show you that the seven year itch is real it's a whole other story. i've been married 16 years i know so, but I mean, yeah, for yeah. some reason i can't make it past seven years <laughs> I've, I've got 14 years in relationships and i can't make it past seven um but either way it's funny. I, I was wondering if you wanted to bring that. No, up. It, no. The idea is, uh, this is a little bit off, the off the cuff comedy. Um, is this film exists? Mm -hmm. It is a fifty minute behind the scenes documentary. Documentary. I had no business shooting it, by the way, because I just I'm just one of those guys. I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. What the hell? Jim will try anything. I Actually, execute. I, I, I. You don't have to get it perfect you just got to get it started well this is what that's what gary v did he yeah. he was taking his parents wine store and going and putting up a camera and going mm. let's talk about wine this is what we have in the yeah. shop today if you're eating fish try this yeah if you're eating spaghetti try this and he grew it into a multi this, multi multi million dollars 60 industry. million dollars in five years 
That, I mean, that's incredible. Because yeah. I know what I've been able to accomplish in five years. Of course, I think that more people like wine than they do drums. It's, you know, I think, uh, what do we do with the research on... Look at me. On I'm drinking wine right now. Wine and drums goes together. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a well, lot of that, that film... You know, has has been kind of like, man, that just if I could just see the light. What, of day. Are you guys? Let me ask you: Are you guys and gals <laughs> interested in seeing this? Because I brought oh it up. Oh my gosh! I brought it up to Kurt and Tully. Now, those of you in the know know that Kurt Allison and Tully Kennedy are—they're my bedfellows, man. They are my best pals. I have seen these guys more than I have seen my wives, girlfriends, blood brothers, family members, weddings, funerals graduations missed year after year after year traveling down the road with these guys. I just got off a bus 16 years from Jones Beach, New York with these guys on a 45 foot tube and I got to the house. Jim's here. We're recording this episode. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see this 50 minute documentary? It's a slice of time. It's a moment in time. Stamped. It's a moment in time. And, and it, I mean, it's. I watched it the other day just to kind of, you know, see if there's anything I could possibly do. And there's a couple of little hiccups here and there that I want to fix. But, I mean, the way you guys play off of each other and how much fun you have just, you know, ribbing each other and, you know, how they play to the camera. It is awesome. We I, one I time had offers for a reality show. Oh, this could yeah. probably get that. It that almost done. happened, but And don't and you better get me involved with that. Be careful what you wish for <laughs> with your reality show because sometimes you only have a window of not 15 minutes. You literally have a, a window of 2.5 minutes mm -hmm. and there's a cap on the money you make and there's a cap on everything. Mm -hmm. Now it worked for, you know, some of the you know, the hunting shows and that kind of stuff, but I don't know. Um, but I mean it's not something you it's not Everything far happens fetched. for a reason, you know. It's I mean? not far fetched to do something like that online these days. It would also be really weird to script us because I think a lot of the magic would disappear if you scripted us because we're talking about three guys that finish each other's sentences. Mm -hmm. I got in a rip roaring, silly <clears throat> fight with Tully yesterday. And not even an hour goes by. We made up, we hugged it out, we burst out into laughing, laughing mm -hmm. with a little tear. And then we got on stage and we destroyed it. It's a, it's a brotherhood. Yes. You know, I mean, it really is a brotherhood. You've been playing with these guys for almost 20 years. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that does that's, not happen in this city by choice. Right. We made a choice to make that happen. So the film is called Working the Dream, and I ran it past Kurt and Tully, and they're they're into it. They want to double check it, and of course, I got to run things up the flagpole and make sure that the people at. I did not expect to. They're like, oh, really? I forgot about that. Oh, my God. Jim followed this around for a week. That's right. So this thing might see the light, light of day. So enough about me. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Sales, social media. Um, well, getting back to what Sarah was talking about, a lot of what I talked about at your drummer's weekend does come down to that sales process. And I even I, I invoke it not just for creative things, but also for the LED lighting business that I'm a co-owner of with a great friend of mine. Tell us about it. Uh, Tim Cooper, he's a, he's my partner in the business. And, and um, he was in the LED business uh, a year when I was still with Mercedes. Um, and he told me what he was doing at the time. And I just saw the LED technology coming out. It was kind of emerging. You only saw a smid, like a, just a tiny... Uh, these, these are LED lights? Yeah. Right I mean, uh, you, you, only, like, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you only saw a little sliver of the shelf space being now devoted. It's getting bigger. Oh, my gosh. It's exploding. Well, I mean, it's inevitable. And we no. will all... We love Edison. We mm -hmm. love that, that that happened. But the world is going to go there. It's, it's heading there. It's heading there. It's, so. it's pretty much already there. The wave is coming on shore. If anything, it's probably crashed. And, you know, we're getting that little... Yeah, so if you... I tell, tell you what, if you are a business owner or, you know... I mean, like my, a sound check. You know, my, you know, my yeah, sound check would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Case jumper. I've talked to you about it. Sound check is good. They're sitting on at least 60% savings a month. I'm going to be sitting... I'm going to be going to sound check tomorrow for a rehearsal for the CMT Awards because we're playing the CMT Awards. Which Warm is, introduction. It's going to be really, really good. Uh, but no, I mean, uh, my, you know, through my teaching and my crash course for success events, I go 
I meet a lot of people. So I'm at guitar centers, I'm at Sam Ashes, I'm at mom and pop drum shops and music stores and high schools and colleges, and I meet small business owners, I meet people from Fortune 500 companies. If you have a physical brick and mortar business and you wanna make the transition to LED lighting, let me know. I will introduce you to Jim and his company. He will come out totally turnkey, white glove, transfer everything out. There's government savings. You're gonna say on your save on oh your bill gosh. every month. Yeah. You just it's just that little transition in yeah. the technology and your bill. Sometimes you're looking at you know a payoff of about two to three years, and that's about it, depending on the size of the space. But yeah. uh, a lot of the sales processes that I use even come into play there because yes. a lot of the the things that I teach are the closing techniques. Because you can have sales techniques and the ability to create rapport, do a, um, a fact finding, uh, uncovery type of thing, and, and figuring out what your customer's looking for. But getting to the table for that value proposition is the most important thing can, because that's where you really put out your wares and you can explain why you're asking for the price you're asking. Then comes the close. Because if you don't close, you drop the C, what do you do? You lose. You gotta close or you lose. Ba bam. So let me ask you this. As a single men out there, can mm -hmm. we use these sales techniques to close the deal with single ladies? Well, do you, would you get objections from ladies? <laughs> I mean, come on. No, we don't want to use techniques. I, I mean, look at this guy. I just like to be super humorous and fun in the moment. And if you don't like what's it's happening. It's part of the sale. It's a big world out there. I mean, everybody is a salesperson. That's what I was talking about before, the hierarchy. Talk, talk to the musicians out there. Musicians, that want drummers, to sell their voiceover, wares. songwriters. I say all the time, if you're, if you're the people that were in your class were there for a reason, they want to make a career in drumming. They want the to be 25 in the campers business. that come to the drum, drummer's weekends. Right. And I say, when I sat down and talked to them, I said, what are you, you guys all, you're all here to get into this business, right? And all the hands shot up. I said, how many people here consider themselves to be a business? A couple more, you know, a couple less hands shot up. And I said, how many people here hate salespeople? Every hand shoots up. I say, you know what, guys? What drives a business? What feeds the business? What's oxygen to a business other than cash? It's sales. Mm -hmm. Without sales, there is no business. And congratulations, you're all salespeople. But in people-oriented businesses, like mm -hmm. the music business, where it is about relationships and it's about people. But you're still selling. People don't want to be sold hard. They no. want You want your talent to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, I had a couple of people in my early days say, let your talent speak for itself, Rich, mm -hmm. and things will just sort of happen. Now, that is true, but there's no reason why you can't have a nice website so that people can see what you look like, hear your recording, see what you look like playing, read about the, your products and services, have a nice business card, then combine that with great stuff like show up, showing up on time and having great sounding gear and being the first one there and the last one to leave and being able to take direction. And like Those things are all like- It's part of the sale. It's part of the sale. It's part, but what you're talking about is that first tip of the spear in the marketing getting people to know about you and at least show up on their radar. When it comes to, well, hey, because one of the biggest things that spurred this on was voiceover people who would get the question right out of the box that somebody would find them and then email them and say, hey, I like, I've heard your stuff, how much? That's the first question. First question. The first question for any creative, and let me mm -hmm. let me tell you this, folks. I've had a lot of friends that are, say, photographers mm -hmm. or demo singers mm -hmm. or drummers, and they are moving to Nashville, and they want to. They ask me, Rich, how do I know what to ask for? And I said, It's the Wild West. You can get what you can get. Yep. You have <clears throat> to put a price. You have to put a value on your time. So it's the T, two T's, time and talent. And I, you know, I did a meme about this about a week ago. I am the first person to surround myself with experts mm -hmm. because I can't do everything. First of all, I'm not interested in everything and I don't have the time, but I want to have complete control over everything that I do. I want everything that I do to have to be golden. Mm -hmm. So I have to hire people that are very, very skilled. And if you knock it out of the ballpark, you are not even going to have to ask for your money. Boom! Mm -hmm. Cash, check, PayPal, Venmo, you're getting your money. Well, I mean, that's what a personal brand can do. You know, getting your price in a drive to the bottom market, a race to the bottom market, especially with voiceover, anybody can handle or hang a mic in their closet and hang a shingle that says, I'm a voiceover talent. Right. Uh, and then... How do you set yourself apart? Right. And that's, that's all about branding. It's all about telling your story. For, for any creative effort, endeavor, 
And the reason why I target creatives, because honestly, I think creatives are some of the worst salespeople out there. They have no idea. No, they are hands it's down. It's deer the in the headlights. Sales. Whenever they they get that question, what are your rates? And I always tell people the first question. You always control the conversation by asking the questions. Okay. So when people are asking you questions, well. It, your rates can. Well, what What are my rates? What is it that you're looking to do? What do what What's you, your project? What do I need to to give you? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 things can slide, and they can also your rates can also be adjustable mm -hmm. from where you are in your career. So if you're a 22 year old drummer that just graduated from the University of North Texas or Musicians Institute, and you're coming to Nashville, Tennessee. Take the job for fifty dollars. Oh, well, that's yeah, saying yes to everything, and and that's helping you. That that's the hamburger versus steak mentality that I did a video on yeah. a couple months ago. I call them so some of the clients that I have for voiceover are called hamburger clients. That you know they don't pay much, but you know what? The amount of volume I get from them will replace my income, and that's what pretty much has happened over the past and year. And all those hamburgers talk, mm -hmm. and they will lead to the sirloin and to the fillet. Right. And it it just works. But I know out a lot of voiceover pa talents, a lot of voiceover people who won't take the hamburger clients because it's a pride thing. Yeah, I won't crack my mic for anything less than three hundred fifty dollars. And when I hear that, I said, "Okay, great. Who who are you talking to? Well, yeah, How much were yeah. they willing to go down?" And did you get to that value pres presentation portion of the sales process to justify how much you want? You have to justify it to them. There's, there is a dollar amount. You You're know, not, Don LaFontaine. Don LaFontaine made thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars of voiceover, even more per film. Per film, per, because per trailer. His, he branded the film in a world. Right. And I and I even parodied that on drumming in the modern world. Mm -hmm. I parodied. Don Lon Fontaine, mm -hmm. and and it's really funny because you know Jim is kind of like a voiceover mentor for me. So he goes, Rich, I kind of like what you did with that in a world thing, but I'm actually redoing the trailer for Drumming in the Modern World for you because he understands writing copy even better than I do, and he is a better voiceover artist than that. He's got a bigger range and he has much more experience. The thing that I like and that Jim likes about what I am doing with my voiceover is that I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Do I make a living doing it? But no. But when somebody hands me copy, I can execute. Yeah. I, I did all those short films that are on Rich Act. Stock com. Mm -hmm. It's all my voiceover. Yeah. So um, just if you want something, if you're interested in doing it, I know you would agree. Just put yourself out there and do it. Take take that risk. But but I digress. I w I want us to, to to stay on this this subject of pricing because I mm -hmm. do have friends. I got friends in Los Angeles here that say like, look at I don't walk out my front door for less than five hundred dollars. Now right. of course these are guys mm -hmm. that have played on hit records and they've done huge international tours. So that does make sense. Their calendar is booked up enough to where they go, okay, I'm making a living from touring with this person, recording regularly with this person, and doing drum tracks from my studio. I teach them lessons, da, da, da. So I have a couple free days a month available. So the only way I want to fill those days is if I make that $500 minimum, yeah. right? So that does make sense. It takes time to get there, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm to set a price point like that. But you can start doing it. So say you're that person that's 22 years old, you move to town, you're making that $50, and then you get a touring gig. And mm -hmm. then you get that touring gig and you start to develop a reputation. Maybe you say like, hey, can you can you give me, uh, will I do the gig for $75? At the same time, look at all the fun things that I've gotten to do, and I will go, and if I like the person enough, and I believe in them, maybe I'm producing, I'll go play for free. Yeah. Sometimes I, mean, I come out of pocket because I got to pay John Hole to set up my drums. But I mean, at that point, you know, from a business standpoint, that's a tax deduction. It's a tax. It's, it's advertising, and I'm working my craft. I'm working the dream, which right. is the which is the name of that. And the thing is, and <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. It's advertising. Yeah. It's part of your marketing when you actually go out and shake hands and do hand to hand combat. You know, the marketing. Uh, the sale is still going on in that sense. You're still selling yourself to that person. I truly believe that in any given situation, you know, to quote Grant Cardone in his book, it is a sell or be sold world we're living in. You're either doing the selling or you're being sold in any given situation. Right. I don't care. I mean, even if you're in high school, and I used this analogy on some of the students in your class, I said, you guys are salespeople. You just don't know it. And they said, how? I said, well... Uh, you guys, you know, you're in your junior, senior years of high school, I take it? And they said, yeah. And I said, you you got a prom coming up next year? Yeah. Probably got a girl you want to ask, don't you? And they said, yeah. Congratulations, you're a salesman. Yeah. Okay, you got to sell yourself to that girl to ask her to prom and for her to say yes. That's the close. It's like in nature. Yeah. You ever watch, you know. It's the sale. You know, the, 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 uh, 
the there's fun, crazy ways in nature where a male can display himself mm -hmm. to a woman and they might have big plumes it's or the they pitch. might have a song or they mm -hmm. might make some interesting sand sculpture to impress the woman or Absolutely. it's like the female of the species which is really really crazy mm -hmm. hey um if you had to tell the listeners grant cardone um gary v what are the books for them to buy Crush it, um, right? crush, crush it, it is always a good one. I, I, I mean, honestly, from a marketing standpoint, I'm a big fan of uh, the basics, which it all started for me with uh, Reese and Trout, Al Reese and Jack Trout, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Okay. That's a great book. Um, what's the latest one I'm reading? The the Tony Robbins book is the latest one I'm reading, which actually I think John Hole is reading. He Personal actually, Power? It's or like, the financial? It's, it's the financial one. It's so uh, Money Master the Game. Money Master the Game, okay, um, perfect. I've read a couple of Tony's books. Um, I go back and listen to uh, Grant's book, Closer Survival Guide. He's got like 99 closes in there, and it's all you know for getting them to agree and buy the product at that particular point in time. It's, it's pretty much a hard close, but you can take those ideas and dissect them into what you do and say, okay, how would that particular close, because they're, they're all not gonna jibe with you. You're not gonna be able to absorb and memorize them in one pass. Mm -hmm. You'll have to listen to it over and over again. And it's, even some of them are kind of outlandish, but some of them are really good. And you can actually internalize them and put them into your own um, words and everything and, and, and verbalize them the way you see it mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, however you get in front of a customer, you yeah. know, for, for you, for anybody. But I think, you know, when the creative, I think you've actually learned, you, I think you sell fine. I think you're, you're, you're able to sell yourself very well. Um, the reason being is because you came on the scene and you embraced all the technology that was coming out. Uh, Facebook and YouTube and everything. You I, were, I, I think that you either have a little, if you don't have <clears throat> it, you need to learn about it. Yeah. But I was always the guy, even at University of North Texas, where I was living in Denton, Texas, but I would drive down the 30, the 30 minutes, the 30 yeah. mile plus miles into Dallas, Texas. And there was top 40 bands that, that were playing that I loved, mm -hmm. that I wanted to be in. So I would go and I would talk to the drummers and mm -hmm. I would talk to the band leaders and I would meet all the guys in the band and I would I marketed myself and says, hey, I can do this. Can you guys put me on the sub list? Yeah, well, we never heard you play. Let me sit in. So yeah. I would sit in and then I got to be friends and I literally ended up playing value proposition. every high level band in Dallas, Texas. That was your value proposition. You started getting a notoriety and uh, you know, it, it kind of preceded you. And even in this town, some people, you know, would kind of josh you and, and, and needle you about the fact that you always had a demo tape and a business card and you were always handing out demo tapes. And it's even in Working the Dream where Emily West is talking about how, you know, back in the day at a Halloween party, someone dressed up like you and spiked up your hair and, and they came with a leather jacket. Hey, I'm Rich Redman. But you know what? Wow. They're saying Forgot your name. Yeah. They're saying your name. You know what's really crazy is that when they say your name, it precedes you. That's not a bad well, thing. Well, and, and I, and, and I can't stand the way he does it. Great. You know what? Who's that again? Rich Redmond? Yeah, that's what I've been saying all along. Uh, you know, em Emily, <laughs> Emily's musicianship gives me, <laughs> gives me goosebumps. I mean, one of, the, uh, one of the only yeah. recording artists I've played with that consistently gives me goosebumps, and makes me incredibly happy, or makes me cry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's playing the drums behind yeah. her like wow so i got really when happy you had when me out to that. yeah when i shot that yeah i had no idea who she was She's incredible and you know i was getting the shots of you and everything and all of a sudden she hit a high note and i was like oh zoom out oh my gosh i mean i felt the hairs on the back of my neck no stand she's that kind of talent and so everybody check out emily west oh my gosh uh known her since 1999 uh, played her showcase. They got her signed. She's down at she she uh, does Musicians Corner quite a bit. From she's a good friend of my uh, a buddy of mine named John Tuminello. Love uh, John. You know you I know played, Johnny. I played on with John That's right. Tuminello yeah. songs. Dude, this this goes so deep. Oh my God, guys, the the layers in Nashville. Check this out. Talking about books. I did a I video for this. Him too. I bought this book. It's the Zora. Uh, there are brick and mortar bookstores still and I got the iPad and I do download things I like the convenience I like to go on vacation with my iPad and have all my books but I bought this book by our friend Zorro it's called Soar you were meant to live for so much more and much like my crash concept where I talk about commitment relationships attitude skill and hunger in a sort of secular way I mean Zorro pretty much does the same thing but he's also you know he's a minister and he he's you know he's branding himself as a as a as a speaker that can speak to churches and youth yeah. rallies and that <clears> kind of stuff so he's coming from you know more of a spiritual point of view and he's got these nine life principles which are amazing uh, 
They are called surrender, discover, dream, strategize, pursue, believe, bend, be, and impact. I mean, it's really heavy and it's a real easy read. And he's got these little asides with these awesome quotes from people like Vincent Van Gogh and, um, yeah, oh God, just like, uh, let me see, Mark Twain. Let's see who else. Some really big Tiger Woods. I love those kind of little sides. They're right. kind of motivational. So pick it up, and Zoro will probably end up being a guest on our podcast at some point. Love to have him. You know, he was here for about 12 years. We became friends, and he moved back out to Los Angeles because he's like, as much as I love Nashville, I miss the sun and the culture and the food, and I say I get it. <laughs> um, and so they check out Soar, everybody. Let's, uh, are there any questions? Mark here? Bernhard, he actually, um, I appreciate the fact that he put put in a lot of work to ask this question. Um, he says, my band is reaching the point where we are starting to get some opportunities locally to open some national artists, Billy Cyrus, Joe Diffie, things nice. of that nature. Uh, he's trying to get from 500 capacity venues to uh, three and 4,000 capacity venues. They have our eye on an upcoming Travis Tritt show to cool. ensure local support on larger shows. Would it be better to reach out to the artist management for those opportunities, or should we be persistently pestering the venues? Who usually, make, usually makes the decisions for opening support acts for those The promoter. Venues? You're wrong on yeah. both of those. You guys need to know the <clears throat> promoter, because the promoter, the promoter is the big risk taker in, in the music industry. If, a, if they book talent on a festival and the festival fails, see, they've got to put up all the money to bring the talent in. So that promoter is paying for Travis Tritt to come in. So whatever Travis Tritt's rate is, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars. I don't know what he's selling for now. The promoter comes out of that pocket to cover that artist. He has to guarantee the artist. Then he's taking tickets sales to offset that cost and hoping that he's going to actually make a profit. It's the gambling side of the music music industry, but if you become a promoter that gets your game down and establishes relationships, you can really win. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is be friends with the promoter and the promoter needs to know that, that you will show up and you will truly get that crowd excited and warmed up for Travis to come out and do his thing. That's what yep. a great opening act does. And so we always try to do with Aldean is we always try to do our job. We tried to stay out of the way of Keith Urban and the Rascal Flats and Tim McGraw. And the Rascal Flats were great to us. They had us out for three or four tours. Mm -hmm. And we went out there and literally played 17 and a half minutes on their first tour. That's like three songs. Mm -hmm. We played three songs. So you're traveling, you're waiting around all day you're setting up and tearing down drums to play three songs and because it was 20 minutes on and off. And we did our job. And at the same time, by doing our job, we were able to create new fans for Jason. Yeah. And we got that audience excited. And so there was an energy in the room when the flats came out. And that's you know what, what that a is? good opening act does. That was a hamburger client. Got it, it, it translated into other things. Yes. You know, okay, into the Sirline act that you are. I mean, you were a Sirline act back then. Yeah. But to get on a, on a tour like that at the height of their fame and popularity to, you know, associate yourselves with that tour is not only great for a feather in your cap and your resume, but at the same time, yeah, 17 minutes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, say yes to everything. It's And, and that's part of the, the whole notion of how much time, you know, when somebody asks me to do a voiceover for $50, I investigate how much time it's going to take me. Right. Okay. If it's going to be something like five or ten minutes, okay. I mean, if it's something that where they're going to want to be on FaceTime or Skype with me and coach, and it's going to be two hours, and they're going to, well, let's try this line differently. Let's try it. You know, go down a little bit deeper. Try, you know, pausing. You know, all that. No, kind but of if stuff. they have faith in you and they say, <clears throat> send me two versions. Right. Boom. And that's the thing is that even though they're paying me fifty dollars, it takes me five to ten minutes. I'll read it probably six times right just to give them hey guys here's something here's something i'm hearing in my head that might work if it doesn't not a problem but want to give you as many options as possible love it it's part of your value proposition at that point yeah uh to for them even though you've already closed the deal it helps brand you as you move forward and have them come back again to right. use your product and services right um so yeah so for the folks out there that think that you know you just end up playing you know, uh, stadiums with Kenny Chesney it, it, overnight, it just doesn't happen. I mean, literally, we recorded Jason's record in 2004, and you go out and you play every show known to man. 200 plus. 200 plus. That's a grind. It's a grind. And you oh do gosh. it with a giant smile on your face. Let me ask face. you this, though. I mean, 200 shows, is that 
unheard of. It's great for your chops. No, no, all of us, Dirk Spentley, um, all that Miranda Lambert, all the people that are like our contemporaries did mm -hmm. those did that same thing. And then and for somebody coming into town, that's like a dream. It's a it's the what the, what I was some call rare air. Mm -hmm. It's rarefied air to be in that place. It just, especially with the music business changing and being as difficult as it is, you can do whatever you want, but there is going to be salesmanship involved. Oh you have to believe in your product and your product has to be worthy. It has to be up to par with everything that else is going on. So compare yourself. Like, I don't want you to com overly compare yourself for the rest of your life, but you have to look out at the people that are doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And you have to say, do I stand up? Yeah. Does my product and service and, and, and it also takes a lot of, as Vaynerchuk talks about, uh, self-awareness. You know, what is your DNA? You know, with John Hull, and we interviewed him last week, he set out to be the best drum technician he can be. And he's quickly getting a wonderful reputation. reputation. And he's going to make that work. And he's going to make six, possibly seven figures down the road doing what he does. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind. He's a driven individual. Uh, that's that's the kind of thing that you got to be self-aware. If you're coming to town and you want to, uh, you said this one time that everybody has a place in this business that they really want it. And that's the key. If you really want it, if you have the hard work and work ethic and the patience to endure, because you're seeing guys come to town and 10 months later, they're like, I'm done. Too soon. 10, 10 months. months. You're not even a Nashvillian. Oh my God. You're not gosh. a Nashvillian until you've been here 200 days. Or that's seven, two, two, two years. That's 720 days. Eight months to 14 months into it, they're, uh, I, won't, I won't play on Broadway. What? Well, that's a subject that we've, we've mentioned the I won't play on Broadway cut topic in six episodes yeah so maybe people can throw flaming darts at me but if you feel like you are too good to play on lower broadway eh, i'm probably not going to recommend you for anything because it just shows you really don't want it bad enough yeah i mean it's uh or you think you're too good for it or anything i mean you uh, 10 years 15 Take years the into gig. it you never Take know who you'll gig. meet. It's hand to, you got to look at it as hand-to-hand -hand combat. You'll never know who you'll get in front of. You'll never know whose hand you're going to shake or whose baby you're going to kiss. That's the attitude you got to have. If you have the time to do it and it pays you, and you got to go down there and schlep your gear and everything, and it's only, you know, I don't know what it pays, $50 a night maybe or something? I don't know. I mean, you could do a Saturday night at, at the stage or Tootsie's and walk out 400 bucks. That's you know, a good, that's a good job. That's a good take. That's more than some major label artists pay. Right, and I while you're there, said that. I just said that. That's 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 basically some new artists are. You're not on break. Yeah. You got business cards. You got leave behinds, handouts, something. Marketing yourself, getting right. people to follow you, Sarah. This is another great thing. Always asking for that uh, follow. Uh, Sarah Instagram. has signed off. Just saying. Just kidding. <laughs> See, we were talking too much. She's like, "That's not. We're not talking about that drums. dude's way too ugly and bald." We're, no, we're just not. They're not talking about drums. This but time. I mean, that's to to develop your personal brand. Like I always tell you, it's always about what's in it for your audience. That's the bottom line. It, it's, it's marketing 101. All you're doing is answering the question, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, if I, if I have the, the control to scroll through the feed and you come up and all you're doing is trying to sell to me or trying to do something, I'm, gonna, I'm going to start associating that feeling with your name. That's, yes. the, that's, the, that's the notion you own. And that's, that's, that's almost, it's like a new way of positioning in a way. You can no longer tell a customer or a prospect what it is that you're about because because the platforms are no longer one way they, they go both ways if not even stronger from the consumer side that way it has to be about what's in it for them what kind of value are you offering mm -hmm. at any given moment that's why we started out with the riches wisdom what is it that you know let's talk about some of these things and that evolved into pick rich's brain where people could ask you questions and that's Thank the thing you, buddy. that's the thing i Jim want has always been he's like you need to do a podcast you need to do a webisode yep. i was like buddy i'm too busy i am too busy and you know what we're even busier mm -hmm. thank you but it, jim is also the guy that also tells me to do things in my life like uh, hey you need a car. <laughs> yeah, I've never really been a car guy. And then all of a sudden he tells me, he's like, you know, I'm in, I sell all day high-end cars. And he goes, you know, you, you need a high-end car. And I said, you know what, Jim? You're effing right. <laughs> so we went car shopping one day and I bought myself a nice <clears throat> car. And let me tell you, it is a nice feeling. 
because I'm only in Nashville 48 to 72 hours a week. No. And now driving has gone from, let me drive this plastic box around that smells like dirty laundry to a sport. I have driving gloves. Thank you. Really? Thank you, Jim. I have, no, for the winter, I have driving gloves. No, I don't wear them in the summer because they're leather. You have a heated steering wheel, don't they're you? They're leather. No, I don't have a heated set. No, that was, that was extra. That was one of those things that you just walked into the showroom and the car was on the floor and the uh, the, sh the search ended right there. I mean, the search, I think, to shop for the car lasted about 20 minutes. Well, you go to these dealers and you go, well, that's a little too expensive and that's too dentisty and that's too lawyery and that's too mom <laughs> and dad and then that is the perfect thing. So I did Wasn't that. it said to you recently, you'd be like, oh, you would drive an Audi. Oh yeah, some people. But they, he might be a guest on. He might be a guest on. The <laughs> I show. think he should, man. Oh, it would be a laugh riot. I, I think I, all I three really of us be. on this show would be really, really good. Um, so, let me ask you this: the red light is still on. Yes. We're having a ball. I hope everybody else is having a ball out there. How are we doing, Facebook land? Um, so, Sean Deal Giant. Hey, Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Um, Excuse me, do you <laughs> mind? That's an inside joke. Um, so. How can people find you? Tell us about all your products and services and the best way to find you. Uh, well, first and foremost, a lot of what I do is, you know, like I said, um, as I get older, the thing that I think I capitalize on most is getting in front of somebody, whether it's a business, a personal brand. I've always been that guy, and my guys in radio have always joshed me about this, is I was the guy who would always say, you know what you should do. I was always that guy. And I think there's a reason for that because I just, as someone talks to me, the, the gears are turning in my head and I'm thinking they, they can do this, they can do this, they can capitalize on this, they can be this. And then I'm instantly going here. You're almost I'm like a life coach. Really, you're almost like a life or business coach. But I mean, that's it's but it's more of a marketing thing of helping people get to and even helping with their business plans and the formulation of the structure of the business and how things can you know uh, how they can get paid for things and, and things of that nature. Recently, I helped a, 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 a the the I'm in BNI and a friend of mine who's in the BNI chapter with me. She does something for Class 101. She's got something going on where her territory is kind of sort of being compromised and. Um, she basically, you know, I said, well, do you own your own URL? You know, namehere.com. Right. And she's like, no. I said, do that within the next 20 minutes after we leave. Right. Okay. Lock that I'm going to go to godaddy.com, put in your name.com and say, look, it's available. It's $12. Do it. Now. Now. Yeah. Before somebody else does. I said, I don't want you to be in the position three, six, nine months from now where, man, I should have. Okay. God. You don't want to be in the me yeah. a member of the widow should have. And the funny thing is, is that she's already got the the horsepower behind what she's doing. Mm -hmm. She's got return clients, people who rave about her, five star reviews on her professional page. I mean, she's doing it. She just needs to step up. Her she's mind. got to be a personal brand, right? Right. You know, and that's that's what I'm trying to so impart. So, can to you her. can you uh, can you help people with that? How do they find you? What's your email address? Uh, email would be pretty much. You can go to jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com and contact me there. Um, uh, follow me on Instagram at Jim McCarthy V O S uh, and pretty Voice much voiceovers. Uh, yeah, VOS. That's, that's pretty okay. much my handle. All right. Um, but again, with the videos, obviously, um, I mean, a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is more documentary esque. Mm -hmm. Where I just did it for a chiropractor, where I just followed him around for two and a half hours as he interacted with patients, and we condensed it into a five minute video. Again, knowing where I sat in front of him, and we discussed the plan and the strategy. He had other video producers in there pitching their wares, but because I have a sales background, I know how to explain how I what, do what I do, and I can pretty much, after I do that, name my price and back it up and close. He went ahead with it, okay? And I, I was working within his budget, which is okay. Um, and we did a documentary style video based on the community where we lived. And I said, it's gonna be like this video. It comes out, you have already got people that are fans of you, they're gonna share it. You put a, a couple, you know, 50 to 100 bucks behind it on a Facebook campaign. Mm -hmm. And dude, before he knew it, he's like, man, I'd hope, I think it would be a success if we got 2,000 views. I think he had 2,000 views in the first 18 hours. So this is, this is, a, this is a product that's, that's affordable and high quality. So people should yeah. check, you, check you out for that. And then, of course, the, any businesses wanting to go to LED lighting, mm -hmm. big.lighting.com. Big dot big.lighting.com. Um, and then it's, uh, kind of, it's funny because I, 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 it was one of these topics I've been thinking about addressing as of late is 
you know, what, you know, you do all this stuff over here and you're in the lighting business? How does that kind of work? Well, people are like, okay, so you are a accomplished drummer and now you want to start not at the bottom. Of, no, they asked me, right. so you're an accomplished drummer and now you want to start at the bottom of the, bottom of the acting food chain? Right. Dude, it's just... Uh, you know, you've, you've always wanted to be an actor, though. I've always wanted to do it, so you just do it. I think your umbrella is more of entertainer. Right. And, uh, and your umbrella is all sorts of cool things. Oh, my God. And, and that's, you know, I try not to get cocky about it, but I know I bring a lot to the table mm -hmm. when it comes to certain things. Well, you have mentored... It takes time. You, I mean, you know, you have been the guy on my shoulder that has kept me on track in some dark times, and you've helped me um, stay on track and be a forward thinker and an outsider the box thinker so thank you so much you know for that and and you know speaking of sales you know i mean i can i on the socials i can be salesy and i have to be careful because i have so many services i mean yeah. teaching in-person lessons doing the camps doing clinics all the signature products hey look at my new humesenberg you know snare drum case and my drumsticks and my book is it's very difficult to let the world know those things exist and not be over salesy because that's where that's where the value of those products comes into play sure and that's where you talk about that what about the humesenberg case is going to make their life much better mm -hmm. is it you know you got to kind of talk about those things it looks really Cool. It really does. It's actually it's a sexy product. And you know what's made you know what it's made of? It's the all the great stuff you would want from a Humesenberg product, which mm -hmm. is a, an American company, 80 years, but they took red wine bottles, ground them up, and they're peppered in with the plastic. Mm -hmm. So it's black with crushed red wine glasses. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. It's um the other thing is it's always it just comes back to what's in it for them. Yeah. Well, as soon as you realize that everybody is in the world, I mean, we all want to make a difference. We all do incredible things for each other. A lot of us do. Um, everyone's like, what's in it for me? Yeah. I mean, that's the why human am I gonna, condition. Why am I going to spend the next 30 to 120 seconds watching this video? It's time out of my day, and that's the, one of the biggest assets people are saying, time is worth more than money these days. Yeah. So one person was like, hey, that was well worth my hour. No. I was like, I was like, almost like, wow. Have we done an hour already? I don't know. Or almost. But I mean, that's that's what it really comes down to. The yeah. best radio station you can listen to is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Yeah, WIIFM. I tell people all the time. That's it. Whenever you post, what's in it for that person on the other side receiving it? Is it funny? Is it informative? Is it, is it inspiring? Is it, you know, uh, is it going to move them? Um, you know, that's pretty much all you, you got to figure out and do. Uh, in any of your social media efforts, you know, is it a pretty picture? They, are they, are they, is it going to make them want to heart it on Instagram? Um, <laughs> it's funny. It's like the same picture over and over again of me. Look, we're both looking at the computer. I don't know like if we froze. Or not. It looks white. like we froze on the. Facebook. No, the, the comments are still coming in. I yeah. think that it's are just. They? I think it's just an internet connection issue. Okay, yeah. But I'm definitely going to go to a faster Wi-Fi connection. AT and T. Fiber. Yeah, definitely. This is going because I'm actually going to be doing motivational events right here yeah. and I got to have super fast Wi-Fi so I'm installing that like ASAP yeah so uh, any other closing comments about personal branding social media um, sales for creatives any fun books you recommend cool projects you have coming up uh, first off, from that hierarchy standpoint, when you're going into business for yourself for anybody that's in there you got to consider yourself a salesperson first business person second meaning knowing how to operate a business mm -hmm. knowing that if you're in a partnership get a uh, an operational agreement going with an attorney uh, whoever else you're in the business right with away. that lays out everything all the legalities mm -hmm. and all that stuff CPA definitely um, and of course doing what you do and doing it to the best of your ability um, and that's and every telling day. that story every day. Every day. Uh, the more people talk about you and the more your name comes up, I mean, that's the thing about social media. If you're not on it, and the funny, I don't do, I don't think I do a great job with it. I like to say things when I have something to say. Mm -hmm. So I don't come up as often. I, if I force it, it, it seems forced. Mm -hmm. So I can probably doubt, do a little bit you better. You can always put a picture of an avocado on there. That's what I do. <laughs> Um, and then what? And then and then one more time. How can people find you? Uh, just look for me, Jim McCarthy VOs at Jim McCarthy VOs. Jim McCarthy truly speaks to the idea of relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're speaking about a crash concept here, um, you know. Atti well, I mean, I think attitude comes into play too. Sure. Um, 
commitment. But we have been we have been uh, friends for so long that even the book that you know you are kind of like consulting with the I'm you know I'm I'm co-authoring a book right now with a friend that he recommended to write it. Mr. Paul D. is mm -hmm. writing it right now. Yeah. So we're hoping to have a copy by the end of the year. And like every chapter that's written, I run it past Jim. He's just kind of like my sounding board. It really is cool to have someone that is in your industry but outside your industry because he, we relate as drummers you know but you, you are not in the inner workings of the Nashville music business so you can get a fresh outside perspective there's another analogy that I call for that uh, I call it being on the outside of your bottle because you can't you're on the inside of it therefore you can't read its label you know, yeah. it's being on the inside of your uh, picture or being on the outside of your frame and you're inside your own picture. I mean, something that Michael Burt talks about, who we'd love to have him on as a guest as yeah, well. Yeah, Michael Burt. I heard you all know, about you. He's a fantastic motivational yes. sales leadership training speaker and author. What did he write? He wrote, uh, it basically he talked about uh, Monster Producer. Monster Producer. And he wrote a book uh, called Monster Producer about how you could be a monster producer and, yeah. and all the different, a, a lot of good sales uh, uh, pointers, sales process things. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically his his methodology of doing it, all very effective stuff. Same thing with, you know, Cardone. We'd love to have Gar Cardone on sometime. And if there's um, anybody out there that's watching. Uh, if you know you Cardone know, or yeah, Vaynerchuk, yeah, tag him. You know, our dream <coughs> list is, is uh, Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, and Tony Robbins. And uh, Ty just, Lopez. Yeah, we're meeting uh, wonderful people, of course, along the way. Of course, I have a laundry list a mile long of all the creative type people that I know here in Nashville and Los Angeles, so we could be taping this thing forever. But if you have somebody that you recommend, send them my way. Just use the hashtag PickRichesBrain or email me at booking at richredmond.com. Had such an amazing time here today. Before we sign off, I just want to remind you guys to check out Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com. You'll be pleasantly surprised. What a great, great talent. Thank you. And um, let's see what else. Thank you once again to the Tipping Chair Tavern for yes. sponsoring. It's the best wings on the East Coast. Check them out. And what's the city in Connecticut? I, it's Southington. Southington, not, Connecticut. I know it's around Southington. And I, and I know I, one of these days I will get up there, Jeff. And yeah. I want to I want to indulge in the experience for sure. Because yeah. I've been voicing it for months. And Timmy Maya, the house band there, is incredible. They play yeah. R&B, funk, smooth jazz, fusion. You would never expect to walk into a strip mall nightclub yeah. and see a band like that. I and, and the thing is, such is that a good time. I, I suggested to him to do like an open mic night. He's like, no, 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 no. Because you 100 get, times no. Yeah. He wants nothing top but top talent. notch talent for free every night no cover charge so make sure you go in there you buy stuff uh beer wine all your favorite drinks and food and all that stuff so make sure you get out there yeah and, and i that. did joke i did say you know jeff i know your your wife's here i love her she's lovely i just met your kids but what's the deal with the wait staff i mean they were all blonde and gorgeous so i said i know how to get a job at the tipping chair tavern i get it and, and even his wife said well yeah of course. Oh, hey, that's what works. That's what works. That's, hey, part, that's, that's part of the sales. That's sales and marketing. Look that's at Hooters. Right. We have had an awesome time here. Hey, before signing off, I just also want to remind you, please check out www.drummingandthemodernworld.com. Yes. Nearly seven hours of high quality educational material for the drummer in you or for your favorite drummer. And that's the funny thing that you bring that up. And I always tell you that this is the product. The next time you think about buying a set of cymbals or another snare drum or something like that, the best thing you can do if you want to be the best in your town or come to Nashville or LA or New York is to have a mentor. And that's the best thing you have in that seven hours. You have a mentor over and over and over again for a measly, I think, you know, top notch for 150 bucks for the whole enchilada. The chapters are only $130. You know, you can spend that, you spend $150 for an hour with you live. Mm -hmm. Or you can spend 130 and have have it over and over and over again of invaluable information to help you carve out a living in the music business, no matter where you are in the country or in yeah, the world. Really, I'm not going to get rich on it, folks, but it is for you. It's everything I know about drumming from the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. So once again, a lot of fun. Hope you had a great time tuning into Pick Rich's Brain, Episode 6. Episode 7 will be coming up before you know it. I'm off to Los Angeles for three weeks. I've got a killer music gig coming up. And, of course, I'm going to be auditioning for all sorts of cool things out there, wherever my uh, talent agent sends me. I'm really looking forward to just power smoothies and soaking up the sun and palm trees and the Hollywood Bowl. It's Hollywood Bowl season. It's going to be so great. What do you have coming up? Anything exciting? You know, I think we're heading out to Charlotte in July. 
Yeah, yeah you're right, this weekend we're gonna, we're gonna be doing, um, you know, going out this weekend, and we're probably gonna go to the Home Depot. And, uh, and Bath and Beyond? Yeah, I, we don't do Bath and Beyond. <laughs> awesome. I'm, I'm domesticated man. I, I have a beautiful wife, three gorgeous kids, and the mortgage. But they did dogs. give you permission to go out tonight and have one more glass of wine, and I will bring my straw. Thank you, Courtney. Love it. Hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in to Pick Rich's Brain. We will see you soon. One more time for my guest, Jim McCarthy. Yes. I'll see you next you. time.